So what is the 10 best guard dog breeds that don't suffer from separation anxiety that would be perfect for people that are out at work full time or just are in and out of the house a lot and need to leave your dog at home? What is the best guard dog breed for those people? Well, in today's video, that is exactly what we're gonna discuss. Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and everything we do around the Fenrir Canine Leaders on FenrirCanineLeaders.com, this channel and FenrirDogTraining.com is all about helping you choose the right breed for you and then how to become high level canine leaders that raise perfect canine companions. So if you do want to get involved and join this amazing community, you can start by hitting that subscribe button, turning on the notification bell. And while you're here, give this video a thumbs up, but we won't waste any more time. We'll dive straight into the video and we'll start with our breed that I'm going to have at number 10. So the breed I'm going to put here at number 10 is the Kuvas. The Kuvas is an Eastern European based uh, livestock guarding and herding breed. Now any livestock guarding and herding breed they are bred to be independent so I'm going to let you know that this probably isn't going to be the first livestock guarding breed that you're going to see on this list. Now what I love about the Kuvas is if you're working full time you're in and out that tends to be more younger people, people that aren't retired because they're working, people that maybe are single and living at home. So you, what I like about the Kuvas is because that tends to be people that may have less experience. Now, obviously there's gonna be exceptions to this, but talking from my extensive experience of helping people choose the right breed, what I love about the Kuvas is that although they're an independent livestock guarding and herding breed that makes them brilliant at being able to be on their own for long periods of time because that's what they're used to being able to do but they're also much calmer they're one of the calmest most gentle of the livestock herding breeds and that makes them beautiful for first-time owners or for people that might not have as much experience uh, with raising these kind of guard dog breeds so for that reason I'm definitely going to feature them on this list even though they might not necessarily therefore be the best guarding breed they are definitely superb watchdogs they're superb guardian breeds they're very good for first time owners and they're also excellent at being able to learn to be left to be on their own. Now at this point of the video, I probably should have mentioned this before we start, but when I talk about separation anxiety, there's no type of breed that is immune to separation anxiety. So when we're talking about breeds and separation anxiety, it's breeds that are more prone. Any breed can be taught to be left on their own, but certain breeds tend to suffer more from separation anxiety if they get separation anxiety might suffer more severely and some breeds might not necessarily suffer as much as other breeds so take that with a pinch of salt because all breeds can be done but we're going to talk about breeds that are less likely now the next breed i'm going to discuss in the number nine spot is the giant schnauzer now based on what i just said about how kind of some breeds are more prone than others again with this list it's hard to kind of rank them so i'm going to try my best to rank them as is intended from kind of 10 down to the best in the world at number one and the breed I have at number one by the way I do think is the best guard dog breed that doesn't suffer from separation anxiety but a lot of the other breeds could kind of be swapped around so again you have to kind of take that with a pinch of salt but at number nine the giant schnauzer now the giant schnauzer again this breed is about guard dog this list is about guard dog breeds in particular so we're not going to spend too much time because we know the giant schnauzer is a fantastic guarding breed and I would have them kind of, they're not five out of five when it comes in terms of being able to be left on their own, but they're, they're four out of five probably. They're very trainable, they're very, very adaptable, which is key when we want a dog that won't suffer from separation anxiety. They love their owners and they love to be with their owners, but with owners that know how to effectively train a dog, it's why I always recommend crate training a dog. If you can generate a positive association to the dog's crate, generate a positive association to them being left on their own combined with the adaptability of a breed like a giant schnauzer then you're going to set yourself up for success in having a breed that is comfortable in being left on its own for longer periods of time now i'm not going to spend too much time on my pick at number eight because it's kind of cheating and that is because it's the chow chow now like i just said this list is about guard dog breeds and the chow chow probably doesn't belong on a list that is specializing in guard dogs but the chow chow can make an excellent watchdog there is a lot of people that have them in kind of watchdog and natural protection roles but i had to feature them on this list because the chow chow is right there towards the top of the list for all dog breeds that are suitable for being left on their own and that don't suffer from separation anxiety now i'm not personally a huge fan of the chow chow and that is because they are renowned for being very aloof they're not necessarily overly caring about anybody including their owners 
which then naturally knocks on to kind of how devoted they are with their owners. But if you want a breed that kind of has the look of a chow chow, you like the challenge of breaking through with a dog that doesn't necessarily care for people, then the chow chow might be interesting, especially if you're the kind of people that want that aren't necessarily at home all the time and you want a dog that's comfortable in its own company alone then the chow chow kind of had to be featured on this list even if they're not necessarily an obvious guarding breed now the breed i'm going to have in the number seven position is the rottweiler now the rottweiler everything i just kind of said about the giant schnauzer is very applicable here a very trainable dog a very adaptable dog and then with the right hands and the right owner is very content at being able to taught to be left alone especially if you can tap into their desire to want to protect the property you can get really tap into that in terms of them being happy to be left on their own because they think you're leaving them with a job to do and they thrive doing that job now again i have to kind of warn people the rottweiler probably isn't a good choice for people that have to leave their dog for long periods of time all of the time because the rottweiler thrives with a leader that can work with it all the time it thrives with a leader that it wants to look to for direction if you're not providing that simply because you're not really there that much then you'll have a dog that will want to start making decisions for itself all of the time you get that with a rottweiler and you're quickly going to devolve into a dog that has quite severe behavior problems because it's making the decisions for itself rather than looking to you for guidance and direction so although it definitely can be done it definitely needs to include a caveat now, talking about breeds that need to include a caveat is very much a good transition to the breed I'm going to talk about at number six, and that is the Kangal. And I'm going to kind of include um, other of the large, powerful, independent shepherd breeds. I think your Central Asian shepherds, your Caucasian shepherds, um, Anatolian shepherds, and the Turkish Kangal are all very applicable here. They are bred to be extremely independent watchdogs that are happy to work alone for extended periods of time, which transitions to having a dog that is willing to be left on its own while you go to work for extended periods of time. So in terms of pure separation anxiety, it's a huge thumbs up. However, the huge caveat with that is, like I just mentioned with the Rottweiler, you dial that up to 10 with these kind of breeds. They need leadership. They need guidance and direction. And if you're the kind of person that's looking for a guard dog breed that you don't have to necessarily put too much work in because you're at work a lot and because you're coming in and out a lot, Lot, then although they can be excellent with uh, managing separation anxiety very well they're definitely not the breed for you if you haven't got the time around your schedule to be able to dedicate to what is an extremely um, extremely intense breed that needs tons of time and dedication to be able to have it under control manageable safe canine companion so while we're at the halfway point i thought that'd be a really good time to kind of welcome everybody that's new here if you are new here welcome and thank you for watching this video and starting to be a part of this amazing community and if this is your first time you might not know that we offer a range of kind of training advice over on fenridogtraining.com so if you are watching these videos because you're thinking about getting a puppy and you want help with making sure you get it right the first time round, so that you don't have to waste a fortune on trainers down the line then that's exactly why i developed our perfect puppy course so that's available at fenreardogtraining.com or if you happen to have a dog an older dog or a slightly older puppy that you start to struggle with you've kind of accepted that you might not have got it perfect the first time round but you want to restructure that and get back to the point where you've got a perfect canine companion then the thing that i have utilized for years with all of the clients i work with is my boot camp protocol it's a one month protocol designed to restructure that relationship to teach you how to be a high level canine leader and have a dog that looks to you for guidance and direction layer up the obedience on that and then you're well on your way to having a perfect canine companion so that is also available at fenridogtrainer.com so if you are interested go and check the link in the description for more information now the breed i'm going to have at number five is the chinese sharpe oh, that sounds like a quite upset little doggy over there talk about watchdogs you can see that's a cockapoo <laughs> angry scary guard dog cockapoo amazing but anyway the chinese sharpe so the chinese sharpe is actually a renowned i definitely have more have them in the watchdog category than guard dogs but it doesn't stop them being any less fearful and if you can have an angry cockapoo trying to scare people away trust me a sharpe will do the job much much better but similar to the chow chow because they do share similar origins 
you're going to get a dog that is happy to be alone again there's not much point in spending loads of time talking about each breed in this video so we're going to blast through them a little bit quicker than we otherwise would have done but we're also working on doing deep dives on this channel for every single breed we did some a while ago but the quality wasn't brilliant we've come a long way once we come out of this lockdown period there's lots of breeders we're going to go and work with and film more kind of high level um would you call them like documentary style videos i don't know but we're going to do much more high level videos so we're going to do real good deep dives into each breed so if you want more information about these breeds we might have already done a real good deep dive so go and check it out but we are going to do one for the sharpe soon but like i say this might just get your thought process thinking and then you're free to go and do more research on these breeds now at number four we have the english mastiff now the english mastiff you guys if you've been following this channel know i absolutely love the breed if you saw yesterday's video i talked how we are very interested in potentially bringing an english mastiff into our home as our next family guardian breed and that is because the although i love breeds like the connie corso the english mastiff is just much better at separation anxiety and i like a dog that's very easily kind of content and the english mastiff is more than happy if you go out the house to just kind of curl up on its bed get inside its crate go on the sofa whatever situation you have at your homes and just go to sleep keep half an ear out check everything's okay but snore his head off until you get back from work now the breed i have at number three is the akita and in particular the american akita not the japanese one now the american akita is a very intense breed a very very um skillful watch and guardian breed definitely not for novices definitely not for inexperienced owners but well worth checking out they are also very happy to work on their own they make excellent outdoor watchdogs so if you're the kind of people that want to have a kennel outside maybe you've got a big property or big pieces of land and you want a dog to be able to protect them an akita would make a fantastic choice i've not booked them in with kind of the kangles because i don't think they're quite as severe as the kangle they can make very good indoor home dogs they will need a lot of exercise so if you're very busy because you work long hours and when you get home you're not interested in working a dog and taking it out i wouldn't consider the akita i'd look more at like an english mastiff for example but if you do want a dog that you can really get stuck into doing lots of exercise lots of working lots of training develop a really good leadership relationship with your dog then the Akita could make a fantastic choice. Now, at number two, I have the Dog de Bordeaux. Now, I'm actually not going to spend too much time talking about the Dog de Bordeaux because everything that I'm about to say for the pick I have at number one is very applicable with the Dog de Bordeaux as well. However, the pick that I've got at number one, in my opinion, in terms of separation anxiety in particular, just does it all a little bit better. So I've got the Dog de Bordeaux at number two, but at number one, I have the Bull Mastiff. The Bull Mastiff, in my opinion, is if you want a guard dog breed that is more than happy to stay on its own if you were eight hour days for example as long as you give it a bit a good bit of exercise in the morning will happily snooze all day and that right rach i'm walking with my wife rachel so i don't know if i've mentioned in this video so if you are new here we used to have a bull mastiff it was our first guardian breed at the time rachel worked full time we both kind of work for the same kind of Fenrir company now together but before that Rachel was a marketing executive again if you didn't know I used to work with young men with behavior difficulties in the special needs environment so I would often be working away a lot of times um, at schools and different special needs schools so we would often be out the house sometimes for eight nine hours at a time i'd always get up and give roxy a good run around in the morning but after that she would sometimes we used to leave the old cameras set up and film what she'd do we'd get in the cars and go and she would watch at the window for what 10 seconds rach before she'd go good they've gone time for me to go and get on the sofa and she would not move for the entire eight yeah. hours if it was raining she wouldn't even go yeah and if it was raining and you wanted to go for a walk good luck because she was not interested all she wanted to do ideally was with us if we were there she was at her happiest but if we weren't there and she's like cool no worries guys you crack on i'll stay here i'll look after the house i might sleep for seven or eight hours while you're gone but if anyone does come i'll wake up i promise and yeah she just get on the sofa curl up fast asleep snore her head off all day until we got home from work and she'd be waiting with her little tail wagging happy to see us so bull mastiff by a long shot the best guard dog breed for people that lead busy lifestyles but want to have a dog that will be happy for them to come home yet when you are away is content happy relaxed and won't 
be screaming, won't be barking, won't be crying, won't be digging up your home. We'll just happily chill out, calm down, keep an eye on things, and other than that, have a real nice snooze. So if you are interested, go and check them out in more detail. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to chat with us, the comments aren't disabled because of us. That's an issue with YouTube, but I won't bore you with the details. You can come over, follow us on Instagram. That is at uh, Fenrir K9 Leaders. We're always chatting on there. Rachel's doing loads of cool Instagram story stuff and really nice photos. So you can come and get involved over there and we'll see you on the next episode of the Fenrir K9 Show.